All right, y'all, so we are at the RV storage facility. This is where we keep our, our camper stored. And uh, I wanted to do a quick video on this. Let me see if I can adjust this, I can't. And this is just an impromptu video. I don't have my tripod, I don't have my gimbal or any of that fancy stuff. So forgive the shakiness or whatever. But I'm a member of a lot of the pop-up forum forums and Facebook groups, uh, travel trailer Facebook groups. And basically I'm doing this video to link to people because a question that we get asked all the time is asking about RV electrical systems. A lot of people who are brand new to RVs, they have no clue. They have no idea how the electrical systems work. And that's what I wanted to do today in 90 degree something heat here in uh, Texas. We're in Needville, Texas right now, which is where we store the, uh, the, the camper. Um, and just go over some of the basics and show you all just kind of the basics on how it all works, how it all comes together. And what I'm doing, this is very generalized. Um, of course, there's differences sometimes in a lot of campers, but what I'm going to talk about basically applies to pop-ups, travel trailers, some basic fifth wheel stuff like that. Um, and just kind of tell you what the batteries are for, how it all goes together. So let me get started. First off, let me show you the battery. Okay, so this is your average RV battery. Now, what I have in here is a 12 volt deep cycle battery. So the first question a lot of people ask is, why do I need a battery? Every time I use it, I'm gonna plug it in. Well, one important reason for a battery is, is if you have a larger travel trailer or even a pop-up, which we don't have a big one, this is this little 28 foot Coleman setup. Um, when you're towing, you have a cable, which is this small steel cable right here that runs to a module up underneath right here. And what this is, is that's an emergency brake applicator. If for some reason your RV becomes disconnected while being towed, that cable will pull out of that module and it'll activate the electric brakes on your camper, okay? Emergency use only, but that's the number one reason why you really need to have some sort of battery in your rig. Because this 12 volt battery will be what applies those brakes. All right, so basic RV electric. The majority of your items in an RV will run off of a 12 volt direct current. Now, when I say that, there are a couple of exceptions, but most of the things that you need for RVing, especially for what they call boondocking, which boondocking is typically when you don't have any electrical hookups. Sorry, and again, I'm holding my phone in my hand, so sorry about the shakiness. Boondocking is when you don't have any electrical hookups, no water hookups, etc. So the, the, the things in your RV that are powered by 12 volt, your interior lights, usually the little lights that you see up in the ceiling. Let me show you what those look like. So this is the interior of our RV, our camp travel trailer. And these are just the basic lights that you see on a lot of these things. This flip on, flip off. These are powered by 12 volt. This is the radio system. It's powered by 12 volt. This is your venter hood. Now you can see we just got through camping. We got some junk in here, but the lights and the fan are powered by 12 volt. This is the fan, the vent in the bathroom. It's powered by 12 volt, so it runs off the battery. This is the refrigerator. The refrigerator in our particular instance does not run off the battery. It can run off of AC power if I'm plugged into an outlet, an outlet at a campground, or it can run off of gas. This is a 120 volt alternating current outlet. This is like what you see at your house. This outlet will not run off the battery because this takes, like I said, 120 volt alternating current. So. How can you get this to run off the battery? Well, there is a way to do that. Let me explain. Okay, so when you're plugged into what they commonly call 
shore power like we are here you can see we have power running over to a little light pole over there when you're plugged into shore power like this what's happening is the shore power coming in in this particular case is using a 30 amp plug and it is 120 volt ac 110 120 i'm using 120 loosely you know just whatever the actual specs are you know what i mean but now when you're plugged into shore power like this that means your electrical outlets like this right here will be working but some of your exterior lights like this will also be working but hillbilly these run off a of 12 volt like you said all the little lights run off a of 12 volt how do they work when i'm plugged into shore power two different ways so when you're plugged into shore power your 12 volt systems also get power as well now what happens in most rvs when you're plugged into shore power it's not pulling that power from your battery in most cases in some cases when you're plugged into shore power it will be charging the battery and the devices may still pull from the battery but usually it'll be set up to where when you're plugged into shore power and you have that 120 volt ac coming in the only thing going to your battery is a charge and then there is a converter in your rv that powers the 12 volt devices now this is what the converter looks like and i apologize for some fan noise but what this does is this takes your 120 volt shore power and it sends it out to the various devices that use it such as your microwave which i failed to mention a while ago your air conditioner your hot water heater when you have electric hot water heater okay now these little fuses over here are 12 volt fuses and what this device is doing is this taking that 110 volt alternating current from your shore power converting it to dc power to power all your little doodads that normally are powered by 12 volt dc for example when you're not plugged in by the battery that we showed you So like I said, there are sometimes occasions where you can actually have power to those normal AC outlets and power to your air conditioner, power to your microwave when you're running off of just battery. To do that, you have to have what's called an inverter. Now what an inverter will do is it will take that 12 volt DC current that's coming from your battery and convert it to alternating current. <laughs> Now here's the thing though, for something like an air conditioner or a microwave or a hair dryer, those have a lot of wattage, high wattage items. So you have to have a big inverter to be able to handle those. And secondly, you have to have a lot of battery power. If you hook up a big inverter to a little battery like what I have on my camper, sure, it might run that microwave for a few seconds or something like that, but it's gonna drain that battery in no time. So that's why you have the convenience of being able to plug into shore power because when you do that, you don't, you can run everything. You can run your AC, you can run your microwave, you can plug in that hair dryer in the bathroom. So. Okay, some of you might've noticed this on my battery. I also wanted to mention this. What this is, this is a battery cutoff switch. Turns the battery off turns the battery on. Let me tell you why that's important. Okay, so the reason that cutoff is there and the reason it's important is because when you're parking your RV for a long period of time, there are some battery draining devices in it. Um, what is the term all the techies use for it? Parasit parasitic draw devices. The most common one is the carbon monoxide detector, which yours camper probably has one. It's just a little detector that runs off the 12 volt that sniffs around for carbon dioxide and in some, a lot of cases propane as well on these types of, of campers. So when you park your camper for a long time, you're not using it, it's a good idea to turn off your battery or disconnect your negative cable so your battery doesn't gradually get drained. Because then what happens, you come out to hitch up, go somewhere, your battery's dead, can't use your electric tongue jack. So that's why it's a good idea to always install a battery cutoff switch or at least have easy access to your battery where you can take off that negative cable and have everything disconnected when your RV is unattended. 
Another thing I forgot to mention that are powered by 12 volt, the slides. This is just a little 18 inch slide on this one, but most of the slide motors are powered by the 12 volt system. So that means you can run them off your battery when you're not hooked up to shore power. So I hope this hasn't caused any further confusion and hopefully this has shed a little bit of light on the situation for you. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll try to answer them as quickly as I can. But the summary is, is that that battery will power most of the 12 volt devices in your camper, which are the essential items like lights. Um, did I mention lights? <laughs> lights, some of your fans, your little USB charger outlets if you have those, the cigarette lighter plug at charging outlets if you have those, uh, your water pump, that's another essential item. Those are all run off a of 12 volt. You can run your heater just off your battery, but just be warned if your heater, even if your heater is propane powered, which most of them are in this, this, size, this size of camper, um, that fan in the heater pulls a lot of battery power. So if you're running a heater off of battery power, keep an eye on your battery because it's going to drain it down quick. <clears throat> but yeah, again, hopefully this has shed some light on the information for you. Let me know if you have any questions. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I try to post a lot of different videos. I don't know what that noise was. <laughs> uh if you haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe and click the like button it helps me out thanks for watching y'all have a great day